Hello, welcome back to Let's Program with CNTR. And uh, we're going to continue working on the task tracker. Yeah, I'm CNTR, by the way. I've, I've done a bunch of these episodes today, so if I'm losing track of my introductions, I apologize. Uh, last time we made this little progress form, I uh, gave it the icon in between episodes, as I tended to do. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're just going to be searching through every single task. So we're going to make a um, progress form, and we're going to uh, call pf equals new progress form. The count is going to be task dot all tasks dot count. The title is going to be searching tasks pf dot show pf dot bring to front. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, I also do like a pf dot uh, I kind of want to basically kind of make it like act kind of like a um dialogue and that you're not allowed to like click stuff until it's. Um, gone. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it too terribly much. Um, okay. So then we're going to go ahead and do like uh, pf.close when we're done. Um, yeah. So that's going to give us uh, a little bit of an idea of how far we're through the, pro the process of searching. It's just very convenient when you're doing any sort of task that might take a long time to pop up one of these and just let people know, hey, it's, it's happening, it's going along. Um, so then we want to go for each um, task, task in task dot all tasks. And just at the end of this, we want to go pf dot value uh, plus plus because it's advancing. That's that's how this works. I'm gonna drink some water. So now what we need to do is um, update the uh, display. So something that's really important actually is do application.do events. If you don't do this, it doesn't pump the message queue, which is how Windows is like, hey, I'm gonna update everything. Uh, it also like, so doing do events will prevent your Windows from looking at your program and thinking it's not responsive. So it kind of prevents that, is this program hanging sort of behavior. Uh, and it will also allow the actual um, thing to update. I have sometimes in the past with these uh, explicitly put, when you update the value, it does application.do events as well. But I'm just going to do it right here. I'm not sure. I don't expect to need any more progress forms, quite frankly. Um, but it's not a bad idea to... Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it just because I think it's a good idea to kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. Um, we can go to the uh, progress form view code. And right here where we set the value, we can uh, do this. And that will basically be like every time you adjust this progress value, it will do application.do events, which will allow this to visually update and will indicate that uh, progress is being made. Now, everything looks a little bit, uh, I don't know. This is a darker green, but whatever. Um, just because it's stuff that's been saved. That's what it does, by the way, if you didn't know. So um, what I need now is I need to set up um, my information. So let's, um, let's prepare pair some information and uh, valid our, our search tasks. Okay. So what piece of information do I need? Quite simple, actually. I need um, a list of um, task dot priority levels. Um, valid priorities 
is a new list. I need a list of um, int uh, valid categories. And I need a list of uh, task module. Oh, that one's going to be a little bit more complicated. This is going to be super complicated. Um, task module module type. Um, uh, required module types. And that's going to trigger all the people who are like, no, you didn't use the valid name consistency. And it's like, I'm sorry. Um, so required module types is going to work differently than the other ones because these are just, is the task in here or not? This is going through this list and making sure that that shows up somewhere um, in the... Uh, Basically, I'm going to need to, like, for each thing, check off, does it have all of the required module types? And if it doesn't, that's a problem. Um, so, actually, this is going to be really important. I'm going to actually move this to the front. Um, update the display. Uh, we're working on this task, not done with it. This is, does mean that it's going to hang a little bit at the end. Like, it's going to get completely full, hang there for a moment while it's finishing the last one. But it's important we do this first because there's going to be a ton of stuff that disqualifies things, and I'm going to want to just, like, skip over stuff. Uh, and I'm going to use that using the continue keyword, uh, and but that would skip over updating the display, which would be bad. So that's why I'm moving it to the front. Um, before processing to make sure... We don't skip updating. And I could like use a Boolean to kind of skip further checks, but I'd rather kind of do it this way. I don't think it matters a whole lot. The idea with this is not to show um, when we're done, but how quickly we're progressing, how close we are to being done. So um, I need to update the uh, these lists. So um, uh, for int... Zero i is less than um, actually no because what I can basically do is well yeah um, for each int um, index in uh, priorities dot selected indices no I not selected um, Checked indices. I think this works. Um, valid priorities dot add index. If this doesn't work, I will find out very quickly. Um, so I'm just going to actually just set up the valid priorities and valid categories components first and make sure that the way that I'm setting those up actually works. Actually, I'm just going to do it with priorities. I mean, why not? Um, so let's just put a thing there. Um, and let's just go ahead and add a task that I'm just going to name tester. And uh, just go to search. Um, yeah, I need to, okay, obviously I need to, um, what is this thing size? 255, uh, you know what, rather than, um, what are the errors? I'm going to name items. Well, that's vaguely annoying. No, it probably doesn't like... Probably doesn't like something in here. Build, does that help? 
No. Good code. Yeah. Okay, it's adding it. Okay, so this thing right here is just going to be ornery. Um. So I'm just going to actually um, come in here and uh, search parameters dot size equals new size. And I'm just going to fix it like that. Um, hard coding the size it is supposed to be. Because there's something that it's not happy about and I don't feel like trying to figure out how to fix it. Um, so you'll notice tester still exists. Now this can scroll down and I can hit, uh, I'm gonna turn high off. I'm gonna hit execute search. So valid priorities should be back burner, low, medium, and immediate. Okay, that's good. That does not include high, which it shouldn't. So that means that my method is functional. So that's good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, I'm going to populate the other two lists. So for each um, index in categories dot uh, selected indices, um, valid categories dot add index. Okay, so that's going to just populate those, um, and then for each um and index in uh, has task module dot I need to remember to change that to checked indices, not selected indices. Um let's see. That should just be able to be uh required module types dot add. Um, like that, I think. So I believe that that should do what I want it to do uh, and just populate those with sort of the things. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take this order of refinement and it is not useful up there where I cannot see it. It is going to be useful down here um, where I'm actually doing these things. So I just want to line up those asterisks. Okay, so order of refinement. So the first thing I want to do is if... Um, valid priorities dot contains very useful um, task dot priority is equal to false. Continue. So if it does not contain, um, so if it the task priority is not within the valid priorities, then it's not a valid search result. Um. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with valid categories dot contains uh, task dot category ID is equal to false. Continue. So continue basically like if you hover over it, it'll tell you like it goes to that for each. But that it's um, a, con a flow control keyword that says, hey, basically just skip to the top of the, uh, the loop and just do it again. I ignore everything that comes after this. Ah, delicious water. Okay, so now we need, um, now we're gonna do module refinement. Name is potentially quicker though, but eh, this is the order that I said I'm gonna do things in, so. Um, uh, is there a faster way of doing this is the real question. I don't think there is. So, um, so I'm just gonna go for each um, ask module dot module type um, type type in uh, required module types. Um, I'm just gonna make uh bool contains all types equals or actually uh, misses a type equals true 
or equals false rather and then afterwards if misses a type continue so all we're going to do right here is go um, for each uh, task module module in task dot task modules if um, module dot id is equal to type Um, break. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a bool has it equals false, has it equals true. If not has it, Misses, um, misses a type equals true break. So this break is going to break me out of that for each. Uh, this is really confusing. So break breaks you out of a loop. Continue restarts at the top of the loop. Break will break me out of this if I don't have it and I'm missing a type. Um, this break right here will break me out of this for each. Uh, if I have the type, because I don't need to keep checking all of the modules to see if the type exists. So um, I'm just going to start commenting some of this. Um, begin checking uh, module types. Check to see if um, the task has a module of the required type. So actually, now that I think about it, um, has task module should be uh, set all set to false. Right, because otherwise this is um, refined by present task modules. Right, so if it doesn't have one of those, then it isn't in the search. Um, So if it has the type, mark it and stop searching. If we finished searching and it doesn't have the type, then it misses a type and fails this test. Um, a module type is missing and the test is failed. Okay, so now we have name and then we have info. Um, so this is check name, check information, and then all said and done, search results.add task. So basically, if we get to the point where we've passed every single test, then it can be added. Um, so there's a couple of things with check name. The first is um, if uh, name dot text dot length is greater than zero, then we check it. And if name or if um, information dot text dot length is greater than zero, then we check it. So only check if we have something to check with. And same thing here. OK, so just putting that there to uh, make sure everything is all hunky-dory with the formatting. So this is where we get to the complicated-ish bit of uh, however it is that we're going to do this. Um, ideally, I would set something up with reg regular expressions, except I don't know any regular expressions. That's, you know, personal failing. Um, but let's see if we can do uh, task.name. Uh, is there, like... Um, C sharp regular 
expressions. Yeah, is there? Um, let's see. Key dot key dot t. Ah, projects class. Represents an immutable regular expression. Okay. Um. Let's see. Indicates whether the regular expression specified in the regex constructor finds a match in the specified input string. Okay, so I just use is match. Cool. So I can. Uh, okay. Maybe. Where are you? System dot text dot regular expressions. Um, so let's go up here and go using system dot text dot regular expressions. Regex. Um, actually, I should bring and make this way up here. Uh, where do I write up here? Prepare some info. Um, name regex equals new. Uh, name dot text and regex um, info regex equals new regex uh, information dot text. Actually, I'm going to leave these null. And then go um, if uh, name dot text dot length is greater than zero, then name regex equals this business, and then uh, if information dot text dot length is greater than zero, info regex equals well, obviously, I meant this, you silly program, but okay. Um, so if that's zero, and then um, if uh, name regex dot match uh, is match, I guess where those regular expressions specified. Okay, is match, and then uh, task dot name is equal to false continue and that continue is for that for each and then over here if info regex dot is match um, task dot get information equal to false continue there we go all of our tests checks, tests, whatever. This should, I mean, granted, I don't know regular expressions very well, but uh, I can learn. It'd probably be a good idea. Okay, so that builds. This should allow me to, um, you know, I should actually add something to this. Something very useful. Okay, so if I do that um, and then go execute search, yeah, it doesn't find anything. Um, yeah, that's because I don't know how to do regular expressions, everyone. Um, that finds tester. Okay, so obviously I need to uh, adjust some things, but that can bring me back here. Um, 
Yeah, so if I turn off that category, and I execute search, then it doesn't find it. Um, and if I say, oh, I need a due date, I execute search, it doesn't find it. So that's, both of those are working as intended, so that's good. Um, obviously, I need to make this a little bit taller to get everything in there, but that's okay. Uh, if I do that, then I need to yeah get a horizontal. So that, that works the way that I want it to, which is really fantastic. Um, okay, so right now the main thing that I'm seeing is, A, I don't know how to format a regular expression, which is, you know, my own personal failings as a programmer, I'm afraid. Um, let's see. Yes. Um, yeah. So basically, in order to be able to use this, I need to look up how to do a how to make regular expressions. Um, but. I'll look into that later, um, and uh, for now, the main thing that I want to do is get this thing not showing up as gray, because that's not what I want. Uh, but search parameters, I think, is set up the way that it needs to be, so that's cool. Oh, right. Um, there was one thing I did want to do, search parameters. We hit this button right here. We need if task dot all tasks dot count is equal to zero. Message box dot show um, no tasks to search. Okay, so that's um, one thing right there. Um, no. Uh, Tasks found. Okay. Uh, info. Return. Don't bother looking for nothing. And then the other thing that I want to do is um, right here. Um, if search search results dot count is equal to zero, just show another message box. Um, no matching tasks found. No tasks found. OK information. Is that the same? Um, no tasks found. No tasks found. Excellent. Search parameters is done. This right here I think is uh, done. Now all I need to do is uh, view the designer for this and instead of being control Make it control light. Now, when I go over here, and this pops up, which it should do hopefully shortly, um, no, a little bit, when it feels like it. Here we go, and I search. Um, let's just drag this bit bigger. Actually, search finds that. That looks all nice. And you'll see that that kind of works the way that we want it to. Um, but if I like turn off that, for example, no matching tasks found. Uh, so there's like one more thing that I want to do. Um, but first, I want to go ahead and add a uh, second test. And I want to come in here. And I do want to just give this a due date uh, for like April. 
we note quite a ways out. Um, and then if I refine by due date, then it will find the second test that has a uh, due date. And if I do that, now we'll find both tasks. And you'll note that they line up next to each other. If I have more, they'll just line up in more panels like this. Um, they might get longer and stuff, and they should wrap around and things. So I'm looking forward to kind of seeing that when I actually have some legitimate tests kind of like on my own to, to test. But um, I'm going to go ahead and mark both of these as uh, completed. Archive them. Archiving is done. Uh, now when I actually do the search and I um, execute the search, you'll notice that completed and stuff is true. And this got wider because it got a completed thing. Uh, and if I make this narrower, you'll notice how this jumps down to the second line because that's how that works, which is really cool and works a lot better than previous attempts at this sort of thing. Let me tell you. Actually, I'm really curious. If I like scroll that over there, yeah, this gets a little scroll bar. So that actually is a fantastic way of displaying that. I've learned a lot on this project already. By the way, uh, like docking and these flow controls, which are fantastic, and other things. So um, there's, like I said, there's one last thing that I want to do, and that is, uh, after I get rid of that, with our little progress form right here. Um, let's see, is it, is there a, uh, I don't know. Um, actually, I probably don't need to add it right here. Um, well, you know what? Center to parent. Okay. Let's just double check to make sure that works because it's always a good idea to make sure that things work. And it will, um, we'll have to do a little bit of things. I'm going to test one more thing too. But it's getting pretty late in the day. So this is definitely the last one I'm recording today. But that won't affect you at all in the slightest. OK, so if I go over to search and uh, I execute search, no, task, no tasks to search is called. Um, I might want to add a, uh, a control F to like execute the search, potentially. I'm not sure. Um, so let's go ahead and add a, uh, a task. And let's just call this tester again. Uh, and if we execute the search, yeah, you saw the thing pop up in the middle of the screen rather than like way at the end. So anyway, that's going to go ahead and wrap things up for me today. Uh, I'm really happy. Uh, or wrap, yeah, today. Yeah, one episode today. So take care, everyone. Thank you for watching. I look forward to uh, next time when we... We have done so much of the infrastructure that at this point, like the only thing left to do is to make this truly useful by adding more task modules. So next time, look forward to, uh, to more task modules. Yeah. Um, until then, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.